Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Glad to uh, glad you stopped by. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a service on the BMW 123D. Um, I'm going to be changing the oil filter, air filter, fuel filter, pollen filter, and obviously the oil as well. Uh, what I will do, for those of you who stopped by to um, have a look at a particular step, um, I will timestamp in the details below so you can go st uh, straight to that time. Uh, for example, if you've only come to look at this video to see how to change the fuel filter, for example, have a look in the description, um, see what the time uh, stamp is and go straight there. Thanks for stopping by. Let's, uh, let's get her up on uh, some actual stands and have a look at what we're going to be doing. Okay then, right, so air filter is the first thing we're going to do. It's dead easy. Pop all the caps all around. And then lift the lid off. Okay, come on. Never missed one. There we go. Air filter, pretty bogging. Throw it away. Grab a new one. As you can see, the difference is uh, night and day. Uh, inside of the airbox looks actually quite clean, so don't need to worry about hoovering it out. If they'd been if it'd been full of leaves and stuff like that, then I'd have uh, got all them out. Seat the air filter, making sure it's the rubber lip around the edge is sitting on the rim of the airbox and then we just need to put the lid back on get it in over there go on get it there we go pop all the clips on just like that first bit done all right Get the box out there. The pollen filter lives under here. A few bolts. Get them all out. Stick them all to one side. Pollen filters tend to be one of the things that people tend to overlook. Um, I've had cars before where the, uh, there was absolutely nothing coming out of the uh, out of the blowers in the dashboard. Um, in fact, it was on uh, my E34 that it happened. Um, my uh, my Alpina. I uh, changed pollen filter, and it was it was ridiculous the difference it made. Uh, so yeah, if you uh, if you find you're not getting much in the way of air out of the uh, blowers in your dashboard, I'll get the pollen filter first. Ooh. As you can see, that was uh, long overdue. A replacement. Let's get all of that out of there. Pull her out. Come yeah, on, there you come. And there we are. That's uh, pretty bogging. Go that to one side. Get its replacement. Okay, three tabs across the top, line up with the three tabs at the front of the housing. Let's get it in right, right. Get the back end in. These little tangs go underneath at the back. Place. 
nice. And there we go, that's it installed into its housing. Now what I'll do, uh, I'll get rid of all of this rubbish and I'll bring you back in as I'm about to install. Okay, so give it a good, uh, good clean out, got rid of all the leaves. We install the housing. Obviously it goes over the, the two ports in the scuttle panel, just like so. And then I'll go around, reinstalling all the bolts. There was one bolt missing for some reason, but I don't really know why. But it was missing from the front. Sweet, and that is the air filter, pollen filter done. What we'll do next is drop the oil out and change the oil filter. Right then, underneath the car, what we need to do is open up this little flap under here, that'll pop off. Sometimes I get lost, it's not uncommon. Okay, now this is a 17 mil socket. What I'm gonna do is crack it off. And there we go. I'm just going to let the oil drain out. While that's happening, I'm going to get up top and sort out the uh, the oil filter. Right then, while that's uh, while that's draining out into the oil pan, we'll uh, sort out the oil filter. Pop this off. It's pretty dusty. Pop that over there. Out of the way. Here's where we're looking at. Right, 32 mil socket. Shouldn't be too tight, it's only supposed to be done up to about 25 newton meters. Crack her off. Right, what I'm going to do is just grab some paper towels and then I'll uh, pull that off. Too dramatic. Yep. Okay then. There we have it. That's the filter off. Let's put that to one side so we don't get mess everywhere. Right, while, while I've uh, sorted that out, it's a good time to change my gloves. I'll we'll come back to you in a second. Right then, fresh pair of gloves. New oil filter. Should be sealing it. There it is. It's a seal. A new copper washer. The seal will go on the cap. We'll do that in a second. And the copper washer obviously goes on the sump plug. Um, come back to that in a second. Right. With the oil filter, there's this little uh, little spigot on here. Now, if we look inside the oil filter housing, there is obviously the hole that goes down the center where the, um, the oil comes into the filter. And then there's another little hole just next to it. And that's where that little spigot goes in. So obviously we need to make sure they get the orientation right. Otherwise the cap won't go on. So what I'll do, I'll get it in there now. 
and push her home. And there we go, that's it. That's it uh, fully home. What we need to do now is just prep the cap, ready to uh, go back on. Right then, okay, so we've got the filter in. What we need to do is swap the seal over and there we go. Let's just hook it in with a screwdriver, get it off, give it a good wipe because obviously it'll be absolutely filthy from the old black oil. Okay, so discard that. Let's get this bag opened. And get her wrapped on. Now, what I'm going to do is just give it a bit of a smear of oil. The old oil's fine. All, we, all it is to do is stop it puckering up as we tighten it um, back onto the uh, oil filter housing. Otherwise, if you don't, it can it it'll, it'll, it'll gather and it can pucker and it won't seal properly. So, yeah, the, the old oil's fine. You can use new oil if you wish, but. Um, it is what it is. Right, okay, so let's get this back on and uh, get it tightened down. Now, on the top of the cap, it says 25 newton meters, so naturally, that's what we're gonna do it to. Okay, so let's uh, obviously make sure that goes into the center of the air, fil uh, air filter. Let's try the oil filter, shall we? Center of the oil filter. And just screw it down. Okay. What I'll do, just get it up to touch. And then I'll grab a torque wrench and torque it down. Okay, that's up to touch. Just grab my torque wrench. Okay, got my torque wrench. Got to step down as well because it's quite a big, it's a big socket. Okay, we need 25 newton meters. So let's adjust the torque wrench to 25. There we go. And there we go. That's it tight. So that's that done. So, what we can do, pop the cover back on, get it where it needs to be, and there we go, that's it, it just pops on. There's like um, little little spigots, like plastic spigots, and it just pops in, so it's quite easy. All right then, next thing to do is to get back underneath and put the sump plug in with the new, with a brand new washer that came in the kit with the, with the oil filter, so that's what we'll do next. All right then, as you can see, it's uh, the oil draining out of the sump is pretty much dry, uh, you know, drawn down to a drip now. And there's the horrible uh, old black oil in the in the pan. So what I've got here is the sump plug. There's the uh, the copper washer that came in the kit. I gave it a quick anneal just to make it nice and soft, just to uh, ensure that we don't get any leaks. And what I'll do is just screw it back into the sump. Get her up to touch, and then I'll just nip her up. There we go. Don't want to over tighten it because we don't want to pull it out the uh, pull the threads out the sump plug. But yeah, so there we go. Uh, what I'll do, I'll get a bit of tissue in a minute and just give that a clean. Um, but other than that, we're done down here. I'll get this oil out and that can go into my uh, big container ready to go to the council recycling centre. Okay, right then. Next thing we need to do is top up the oil. Okay, oil. I've got, uh, I bought a couple of these 20, uh, 20 litre drums of oil. This is a 530 fully synthetic oil. I like to uh, use the 5W30 uh, fully synth in, uh, in my cars. I use it in both this and in my 730D. So yeah, it's, um, I've not had any problems with it. It's, it's been pretty uh, pretty good. Um, and it was a pretty reasonable price as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna decant some into this jug. Um, if memory serves correctly, it'll take around about five liters. Um, 
uh, obviously you could Google it to get the uh, the actual quantity, but what I'll do, I'll I'll um, start with about five liters, uh, and I'll just check the dipstick as we get in, uh, as we get closer to the correct level. So let's uh, decant some in, decant some into this jug. a bit different to the black stuff that came out. Okay, so there we go. Pop the cap on that and put the lid back on that. All right then. Okay, so yeah, we've got uh, about five and a half liters in the jug at the minute. Right, take the uh, Take the cap off the filler. Okay. What I'll do, I will I will put in about four liters and then I will check the level on the dipstick. This uh, makes it so much easier to uh, put oil in your engine instead of using the uh, the retail um, bottles that it comes in. Uh, you're guaranteed to spill half of it all over your engine, whereas with this, you've got a little nozzle. Makes it uh, so much more manageable. Okay, what have we got in there now? Uh, not even two litres yet. So let's carry on. Obviously, you don't want to overfill your engine because um, overfilling it is just as bad as underfilling it. Okay, we've got about three, you know, about four litres in there now. So, let me put the cap back on that. I'll let that drain down to the sump and then I will uh, check the level on the dipstick. Okay, so I've just checked the level on the oil. Um, we're good. Um, it's up to the max. In fact, it's ever so slightly over the max, but obviously the front end of the car is uh, up in the air, so all the oil is at the back of the sump anyway. So uh, I would expect it to be, you know, um, at, on the max once we lower the car down. So I'm happy with the level at the moment. So I will close the cap up, and that's that job done. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Let's put that to one side. Okay, next thing uh, we're gonna look at, the next and last thing actually, is the fuel filter. So in order to do that, we need to get back up underneath the car. Okay, so the fuel filter lives underneath the car. Uh, in order to access it, we've got to take off the under trays. So uh, I'll whip all the bolts out and I'll bring you back in once I've got them off. Okay, so I've got both the uh, under trays off. You, you could probably get away with just removing the rear one, but I've taken them both off um, just for ease. Okay, this is the fuel filler. So what we need to do is we need to under the Jubilee clip here, pull this clip out here, uh, and this module will remove from the back of the uh, fuel filler. Then once we've done that, we can undo the, uh, the bracket that holds it to the chassis um, and replace it with a new one. Now, obviously you can see here, hopefully, that there's an arrow and that is the direction of flow arrow. So obviously, you need to make sure it goes on the right way. You shouldn't be able to put it on the wrong way because obviously this module will only go on the back of the filter and this hose here will only go on the front of the filter. So it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, so yeah, let us uh, let me get all the, uh, all the tools I need and we'll crack it off. Okay then, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo the bracket so that we're ready to go. Now we're gonna lose a bit of fuel. So I've... Um, Got the uh, drip tray back again. Um, I've emptied all the oil into, into my big drum. And uh, obviously, I want it to catch the diesel because I don't want diesel oil over the floor, especially with the motorcycles in the garage. So there's a Torx bit for, uh, and, and a bolt holding it to the chassis, which, both of which need to be undone. screw out and there's 
the bolt out. Okay, so let's just move that to one side. Put the bolt down there. Right then. So, what I'll do first is I'll remove the module end. And there's a simple case of just pulling the spring clip out, like so. And then getting the drip tray ready. And catching all the diesel out of the filter. Which smells absolutely lovely. I love the smell of diesel. Okay, next thing is the Jubilee clip. I think we've got all the diesel out. Let's do the Jubilee clip at this end. Okay, I think we're loose enough. Enough. No, I think we've got a bit more than that. And there we go. Right, let's take the bracket off. And let's remove the filter from the hose. Just give it a few good twi twists and it should pop off. There we are. Nice. Obviously, there's a bit more fuel in the filter. I've got my, end, my finger over the end of the hose to stop it coming out because I don't want, I want to try and avoid going all over my garage floor. Okay, then. All right, let's get the uh, new filter. And here it is. Here's the new filter. So what we need to do, as you can see, the new one doesn't have the rubber collar either. So we'll pull that off the old one, pop the collar onto the new one, slide it on down. Okay, let's Pop that cap off. Right then. Let's get the Jubilee clip back on there. And push it on. Okay. And there's the module back on. Tell you what we haven't done. Those of you that spotted my deliberate mistake. Is how we didn't put the bracket on. So let's try that again. There we go. And there's the clip reinstalled. Right then. Next thing I'm going to do is tighten the Jubilee clip up. all over there. Let me uh, just put it back. There we go. Make it good and tight. We don't want any leaks from, from the filter. Let's position the bracket in the right place.
Oops, dropped it uh, twice. There we go. Let's get it started. So there we are. Okay, then we'll just nip it up ever so slightly and then we can get the little torque screw in. screw in. Let me move me a uh, little bath of diesel out of the way so I don't if I drop it I don't end up in there. Okay, and there we go. That is the fuel filter replaced. What I'm going to do though is give it a little wipe down because it's a bit minging. Um, and then I need to put the under trays on. Um, put, put the under trays back on and then uh, that's the job complete. Now the um, only point really probably to make with this is when I try and start the car is that um, it may take a little while before it fires because obviously there is no f uh, fuel in the filter so obviously the lift pump in the tank's got to Got to push fuel through the filter first, and then, uh, and then we should be good. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'll get the uh, I'll get the under trays back on, um, and then uh, I'll bring it back. Okay, so uh, that's everything on this car done. Um, we've done the fuel filter, oil filter, air filter, pollen filter, fresh oil. Jobs are good. In the only thing I do need to do is reset the computer in the car to tell it that it's had a service. Uh, that way, it won't keep uh, bothering me to uh, service it. Um, what I'll do though is I will uh, film that process but I'll make that a separate video just for those people that only want to know how to do that because um, I'm sure there are people out there that want to know how to do that that don't want to have to search through this video. As I said all of the things that I've done in here you can you can search through um, to to do each step and I will put the timestamps in the description at the bottom. Anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed the video thank you for stopping by um, please like subscribe comment and I will see you all again for the next video from Kev Shed. Thank you very much. Bye bye now.